have to play this game because the rules they don't seem fair if you care god if you're still there bombs falling in syria a child dying of aids fighting around the world a daddy lost his girl still we kneeled and prayed but heaven can feel silent and the floor beneath gets cold when your soul refuses to let go but Do we stand and curse the heavens or lift our hands and feel the sun? The mystery's not clear, just wants your voice and love to hear. What happens when the healing never comes? I know we love the seasons like so. There a chance for me to believe we will dance together soon If there's a brilliant galaxies, I'll count each one till I'm with you They say where you are is better, but I want you here with me Oh, this is for a purpose, but heart won't Silence, your voice is in the winds The hands that made the heavens Will heal the storm within I have so many questions I don't know where to begin Since you were there at the beginning You are Good morning, everyone. It's marvellous to see you all as we come together at the end of a school year that I'm sure will be the most memorable in all of our lifetimes. Despite the fact that we have been physically separated since March the 20th, you have always been in our thoughts and prayers, and we have always been one community, united in adversity under the loving care of God. We come together at the end of this incredible year stronger and more united than ever. And we finish the year, as always, in hope, 
prayer, and peace. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we gather in this place and in our homes as one community, following a time of isolation and uncertainty. Thank you that we are together and well, watched over by you and by people with your spirit of care and kindness, our teachers, parents and carers. In this moment, we lift to you all members of our community who are sick or suffering loss. Surround them in your healing and peace. Give us rest over the summer restoring us to calmly return to a life at school that remains the same but different. Lord Jesus, your spirit is with us. Be present with us now. Amen. And now we're going to listen to a beautiful piece of scripture read by our new head boy and head girl. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born. And a time to die. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill. And a time to heal. A time to break down. And a time to build up. A time to weep. And a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to embrace. And a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get. And a time to lose. A time to keep. And a time to cast away. A time to keep silence. And a time to speak. A time to love. And a time to hate. A time of war. And a time of peace. Our scripture reading reminds us that there is a time for everything in life. Within this, there are times or moments in life that we never forget. These moments are defining and are etched in the memory forever and can be recalled as if they were yesterday. For me, one such moment was on Friday the 20th of March. I will never forget when we gathered together as a school community to say goodbye to each other and to close our college for an unknown amount of time. In the 35 years that I have worked in education, this was a moment like no other. And as I stood on the hill, overlooking the courts with Reverend Nicky, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Hall, looking out over the 500 or so students who had made it into school that day, I was aware of a deep and profound sense of sadness that this was likely to be the last time I would stand with the community of Bacon's College present and pray together as one. On that day, we were an incomplete community because already around 500 students stopped coming to school and a whole group of staff were not in because they were ill. Each day that week, we saw the numbers of students drop as fear, illness, the desire to protect their children made parents keep them at home. Each day, teachers and staff called in because they were ill, or someone close to them was ill, or at serious risk of illness, and they could not come to work. These were the most strange and stressful of times. But of course, we as a school community were not alone that day. Across our country, we were being told to stay at home, to stay safe and to protect the NHS. We were being warned that we were heading into the most challenging times that this country has had to face since the Second World War. Across the country, businesses, schools, shops, restaurants and bars were having to shut with everyone being told to stay at home. Indeed, across the world, in almost every country, everyone 
or was already in the midst of the pandemic and war in lockdown. On that day in March, nearly 4,000 people had already contracted the virus and 177 had already died from the virus in Britain. Across the world, 10,000 people had died. We were heading into a time unknown by all of us. We know now, several months on, that over 40,000 people have died in Britain and thousands more have contracted the virus and suffered significant illnesses and disabilities as a result of it and that the virus continues to take lives. None of us were prepared for the impact and personal cost of this virus. As we gather here this morning, we are deeply aware of our staff and students who have lost people that they have loved deeply in their family and friendship groups. Today, we extend our heartfelt care and sympathy to you. Across our country and our world, the depth of sadness and pain suffered by so many is unbearable and will remain so for a long time to come. On top of this, many have now lost jobs and livelihoods and have the additional stress of not being able to pay their rent or mortgage, pay bills, put food on the table and shelter over their heads. Charles Dickens in 1859 explores a time of deep unrest, revolution and upheaval in London and Paris in his classic book, A Tale of Two Cities. The book begins with the following. This is the best of times. It's the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. They had everything before us. Dickens' novel deals with two main themes, the possibility of redemption and the overriding importance of compassion. While the circumstances historically and politically were very different, the opening to a tale of two cities could have been written about us today as we cope with and try to make sense of COVID-19 and return to some sense of normality. And now our leadership team will reflect on what the best of times and the worst of times means for us today. It was the best of times. Doctors, nurses and care workers across this country donned their uniforms and headed to work in our hospitals, in our care homes, in residential homes, in hospices and health settings. They put their lives at risk every day to tend to the sick and those who are facing death and serious illness. Daily, they did their job and selflessly practiced courageous compassion so that we could be safe when we or our family became ill. It was the worst of times. Daily, the death toll rose across the world. People suffered terribly and died far away from their family and friends who had to be buried swiftly and alone to try and stop the spread of this disease, creating a web of sadness and grief across the globe. It was the best of times. Across our nation, we began to treat each other with graciousness and appreciation. People stood in queues and were willing to wait patiently and quietly. People spoke nicely to each other and thanked the shop assistants, the dustbin men and street cleaners for their work and efforts to keep us fed and clean. It was the worst of times. Across the world, we were cut off from each other. We couldn't see our friends, our families, go to school, go to the theatre, go to the cinema. All those things we do that make community and family and a sense of togetherness. It was the best of times. Despite this isolation, we were creative and found ways of communicating and sending love and appreciation to each other. We used Skype, Teams, Zoom and TikTok to talk to each other and make each other feel loved and loved. 
Each week, we came together to applaud the NHS care workers, and we also grew to know our neighbours and those in our local communities. It was the worst of times. Lockdown put a strain on family life, and for some families, led to real stress, abuse, and unrestraint, creating fear and breaking bonds of love and attachment in some families. It was the best of times. Extraordinary creativity and ingenuity came to the fore as engineers, dressmakers, school technology teams and university, and many more who turned their attention and efforts to making PPE for the NHS and all those working with COVID patients. It was the worst of times. Livelihoods and jobs were put at risk. So many people were followed on reduced wages and deeply worried that they would never return to their workplaces again. It was the best of times. Our world began to breathe again. Fish returned to the canals of Venice. Wild animals have been seen in our cities. Air pollution levels across the world reduced significantly. And in our gardens and parks, we began to hear the sound of birdsong and appreciate the presence of nature in our midst. It was the worst of times. We witnessed the brutal killing of George Floyd, killed by US police officers, highlighting the continued issue of racism, discrimination and prejudice within our world. It was the best of times. Across the world, black and white united to declare that black lives matter. Across our world, people from all backgrounds stood together to say enough is enough. Now is the time for true equality, dignity and respect for all. COVID-19 lockdown, it was the best of times. COVID-19 lockdown, it was the worst of times. We, we now have, have everything, everything before us. us. Across our college, students and staff in lockdown have known the best and the worst of times. Each of us has had to adjust and adapt and learn new ways of learning and relating. It has been a challenge that none of us were prepared for, and yet, in the midst of it, we have learned much about ourselves and our ability to dig deep and to find resilience inside. Let's hear from some of our students and staff about their reflections on their experiences of COVID-19. Hi, lockdown has come with all its challenges, but one thing I've gained from it is having greater communication with parents. This has been very, very beneficial to me as it's enabled me to monitor the progress of those in my tutor group. Thank you. I enjoyed coming to school and it made me very motivated to do work. I read 56 books. One thing I've achieved during lockdown is I've picked painting back up, which was one of my favourite hobbies from a few years ago. And now I paint all the time. During lockdown, I've been extremely proud of the Year 7 students. These students started in September at a new school and having only spent six months physically in the school, the students continue to work really hard throughout the lockdown and have made me really proud to be the head of year this year. Well done, Year 7. In lockdown, I learned that I'm good at art because I've never really believed I could draw properly. Maybe it's because I didn't concentrate properly, but it turns out I can draw. No doubt, lots of you have learned to do wonderful and miraculous things since we've had lockdown. I personally, though, have learned how to do my eyebrows, and I've learned how to wash and do my own hair. But I am so, so happy that my lady that does my eyebrows is going to be open and the lady who does my hair is going to be open. But on a serious note though, I have been brushing up on my French. Parlez-vous français? One thing that's helped me get through the lockdown was my friendship with Omar. Hi guys, um, something that I've gained during lockdown is a newfound respect for spending time on my own. Um, and being happy spending time on my own. Um, something that I'm proud of is being able to knock over two minutes off of my 5k running time, something I've been working really hard towards. I've learned to do extra reading about politics 
and I'm starting to get interested in it. Hi everyone. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of that I've been doing during the lockdown period is I've been taking advantage of the free courses on the um, Open University site and I've been learning beginner's Italian and that's really motivated me to want to learn more and that's what I'm going to do now. During lockdown I have learned how to like be myself and be able to get something. During lockdown I've learned that the phrase where there's a will there's a way is very true. I've also learned that no one person is meant to be in isolation and that by nature we are social beings. We need one another. Now, one thing I've learned during lockdown is different music styles and how to like, write different songs. So one thing that was really important to me was spending time in my garden. I don't know anything about gardening, but I would go out with my cup of coffee, wander around the garden, uh, and I started to learn things and just uh, enjoy being with the flowers in the sunshine, and I even grew some things from seed. Uh, so through lockdown, I've been working on a farm in North London. Uh, and that helped me get through lockdown. I thought lockdown would be pretty boring, nothing else to do. Then I realized I get to play video games and it's like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, I cook with my party, I cake and cake. Uh, yeah, I still have, you still have a family. Uh, you're not all alone. Uh, one thing that I've been I've picked up again since lockdown is is drawing. I I wanted to be an animator when I was younger. Um, for Disney, so I've been following a Disney animator on, on YouTube and I've been drawing along with him. Um, I actually tweeted him one of my drawings and he, he liked it and re retweeted it, um, which, was, which was great. It actually cheered me up that day. I, I wasn't in the mood for anything, so I did some drawing and I tweeted and I was just like, this is what I've done. Thank you for helping me get out of a bad mood. And he, he liked it and retweeted and, you know, said, great job which is really nice. So I'm going to try and carry on doing it once lockdown is, is finished. It's just finding the time. One thing I've learned about lockdown is that I can stream Netflix on my computer. Um, I've really enjoyed gardening and being outside during lockdown. It's nice to get fresh air and see the difference. I mean, really, there's just one. There's one thing that I will take with me through the rest of my life. I think it's that when the world stops, you don't miss things. You just miss people. So take every opportunity to see your friends and family. Don't let busyness get in the way. During lockdown, I've learned to appreciate the little things in life and to look on the bright side. It's, it's been a tough year. We're only seven months in and now living in ultimate fear. It feels like I've been trapped in confinement for years and years and years. We've lost track of time, lost touch with friends, and the old men who usually sat in the pubs are near the brink of insanity as they gasp for a pint of beer. For once in my life, I can say I truly do miss school. The loud science lessons, the fun PE lessons, the aroma I feel when in the canteen hall or even being hit with that big, round, flaky ball, the one which no one seems to remember where it comes from. Thousands have died from this deadly virus. And yes, we've lost sense of human connection. And yes, we've missed months of school. And yes, many of our parents aren't working at this moment of time, but at the end of the day, the show must still go on. In times like this, we must unite and conquer. In the words of the legend, Mr. Freddie Mercury himself, my smile still stays on because I will not let the bad overcome the good. Ella's words, I will not let the bad overcome the good. I will not. Let the bad overcome the good. We know that in the coming weeks and months, while we wait for a vaccine to combat COVID-19, we have to take care of each other and to continue to follow the guidance and social distancing measures. We know that for all of us who have lost someone we love, 
there are days of grief and mourning ahead. We know that for all who have experienced serious illness, that there are months of recovery and rehabilitation ahead. We know that as we return to school and to work, that it will take time and effort and hard work to catch up with learning and with earnings lost. We know all of this, that recovery will take time and it will take patience. But as we come to the end of our assembly today and head into the six weeks of holiday, I wish to invite you to hold on to three things that I believe we have discovered about ourselves during this time. Number one, that we are resilient, creative and inventive and have the capacity to endure and overcome obstacles with humour and dignity. Number two, that we are loving and generous and compassionate and that when we act with love and kindness and respect and go the extra mile for each other, it makes our world a much better place for all. And finally, that we are not just physical beings, that our hearts and minds and souls and spiritual selves need to be nourished by nature and the natural world, by time spent alone and with loved ones, by prayer, music, poetry, reflection and meditation, time with quietness so that we can live well with depth, with meaning and with purpose. Let us, one last time this year, say the prayer that unites us all. Current Bacon's students and staff and all staff and students who have worked at Bacon's in the past. Together, we all form the fabric of our school and make us the great college that we are. Father, we ask that you will give to Bacon's your gifts of faith and understanding, of compassion and courage, of integrity and respect, of seeking and finding. Help us to glorify you in all things, to trust in your love for us, and to live and work to your praise. Amen. A time of blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine be warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon the fields and cities. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
As usual, at this time of year, we say goodbye to some colleagues who are moving on to new opportunities and experiences. All of these staff have supported and guided you, and we wish them all well in the next stage of their career. I'd like you to show your appreciation for them in the usual way. I must make special mention of someone who's leaving us at the end of this school year, someone who has given extraordinary service to this college. Norma Gould joined the college 28 years ago in 1992. In that time, she's been head of RE and Worship, set up the school's counselling service, established the mediation service, progressed to be assistant principal in charge of student services, and finally, to vice principal. Ms. Gould has had a profound impact on this college and all of you. You, the students, have always been at the heart of everything Ms. Gould has done. Ms. Gould embodies the ethos of this great school, and this hall, this lectern, will never be quite the same without her calming presence but she will forever be in our hearts. I'm sure, like me, you'd like to wish Miss Gould a long, happy and thoroughly well-deserved retirement. And I'd like you to show your heartfelt appreciation in the normal way. Miss Gould. Thank you. It just remains for me to say, have a great break over the summer, get some rest with your families, but also keep in touch with your learning and your reading, ready for the challenges and opportunities that we'll face in September. I very much look forward to seeing you all return in September, safe and well, ready for the new school year. Take care, God bless. <laughs>